What are you doing over there, Brett? I was just uh, just checking the YouTube page. Just. Oh, okay. uh, oh my god. So. Whoa. Oh my god. Bruh. Dude. 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 Man. Bro. God. Bro. <laughs> Bro. Is that a hundred? That's a hundred thousand oh subscribers. Bro, Cephas. We made it. We've arrived. Oh my god. One hundo. That's a hundred. I, it feels like yesterday we were at 10K. Yeah. A hundred thousand subscribers is unreal in so many ways, you know. Uh, Jim Davis, you realize the hometown that we grew up in, Tyler, Texas, only crossed a hundred thousand people in it like a couple years ago? <laughs> like, think about that. That's the, that's the thing I think the, about the leading The population of our hometown. Our hometown. Like when I grew up, <laughs> yeah. I remember because we just drive by the population sign every uh -huh, day. Every uh -huh. time we were going in and out of town, so I'd always yeah. look at it. It's like, oh, 84,952. Yeah. Oh, and you just see it every now and again. They change it, you know, once a year or so. Sure. That's the thing I think about. When you look at those subscribers, it's, it is unreal. And it's one of those things where, you know, when we first started the channel. Yeah. For me, I was not plugged into YouTube at all. I knew it existed and I had a, an account that I'd occasionally save a video on or something. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, here. And I didn't really realize really what it was about. At the time, uh, our producer, Travis Bowles, we'd shot some stuff in the past, you know, uh, three and six. Three and, and six, even before things. that. There's a, there's a lot of, we've appeared on screen together many times. A few times. A few times. <laughs> um, he's like, Pruitt, I want to shoot something. I want to make a YouTube show. He's like, I don't know what it is, but we need just start thinking about ideas that we could do. Yeah. I'm driving home one day from work and I'm just tootling along and I, and I think I had like texted you about something because we, you know, we're, this time we're playing every Sunday. Yeah, we're playing we, every Sunday. We've been playing every Sunday for 10 or 12 years. 10 or 12 years straight That's, almost. And that was the longest streak. Like before that it was more intermittent and yeah, we yeah. struggled to find a day of the week that worked. Our group settled on this Sunday game. It was which our had church. Be, it really was. It became the centerpiece of yeah. the week. And I always would just to be like, all right, Jim, talk to me about this. Because I'm one of those people that's like, I can read something 20 times. And then as soon as I talk to like you about it, because you're my DM, it just, the clarity descends. You're like, oh, right, da doy. Yeah, yeah. I'm driving home. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I just asked Jim a question. I'm like, D&D. &D. It's like my source, kind of like WebMD, like WebDM. <laughs> and I remember, like, I accelerated home. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I got home, and I walked in, and I said, Travis. And he's like, what? And he's like. So you guys were living together. We were time. living together yeah. in an apartment. I was like, Travis, WebDM. And Travis looks at me, and he goes, <laughs> oh, and like immediately it was just like, oh my God. And I was like, dude, I asked Jim Davis questions all the time. I'm the player. He's the DM. I'm beseeching the DM for advice. He's given it to me. There's a back and forth, a conversation about whatever it is. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Within two weeks, I think we had a little get together. I forget, maybe it was Mulligan Christmas. It was either Mulligan Christmas. I think it was Mulligan Christmas. Yeah. So for our viewers, Mulligan Christmas yeah. is the Christmas for the family you choose, not the one you were shackled with by the randomness of birth. Yeah. And <laughs> so everyone should do it. Schedule it after it's, the holidays. After the holidays. You will, you will love it. It's a party, a house party, right? And in these house parties, it, there would invariably it be a clump of people somewhere, whether it's the kitchen or outside on a patio, and you could find Pruitt or myself or, or both of us talking about D&D. Now, most of the people at the parties had at one point either played Dungeons & Dragons mm -hmm. with us or were aware of it. It was in those moments of just sort of like talking about D&D and just telling stories and, and talking about the different kinds of campaigns that we wanted to run and things. That was sort of the, the pitch that was brought to me. Travis and Pruitt approached me at, at, at Mulligan and they're like, oh, we've got this idea for a YouTube channel. It's called WebDM. Initially, I, it, was, it was like, you guys are just going to tell the stories that you tell all the time and we'll make it work. I was kind of skeptical uh, myself because I was like, really, nobody's going to want to watch. Or I didn't realize that at the time that there was this huge video component to Dungeons and Dragons that was just starting up it seemed like. 
mm -hmm. and just happened to coincide with the release of 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. I think we'd been playing 5th edition for maybe a month. Yeah, like, like we didn't get the starter set. No. We waited until the player's handbook had come out. We were wrapping up another campaign at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, okay, a, another system. Yeah, I think actually we were playing uh, Pathfinder. It was like the one Pathfinder game we, we, we played. A little skeptical, a little like, all right, what in the world are we going to talk about? Uh, and then it sort of morphed into a, uh, well, let's kind of do a part DM advice show, part just sort of reminiscing about the game, and tap into the well of experience that Pruitt and I have. Mm -hmm. And only then it w we realized like, or I guess Travis had already done some research and, and let me realize that there were already people who were doing something like this. Nerdarchy was already out there. Yeah. And were, were sort of a big inspiration for us early on because we were like, man, these guys are legit. And, and I, mean, wanted they, to, I think they already had a thousand videos. Yeah, well, yeah. of course, right? <laughs> like, they just pump out videos. Love you, Dave. <laughs> Watching channels like Nerdarchy and Dawnforge Cast and, like, trying to get an idea for, like, what is it that people like about this? I didn't know about GM tips with Matt Mercer. I didn't know anything about Critical Role. I knew that there was a guy named Matt Mercer out there making something for Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. But then when we shot, we were like, okay, we're going to do short videos. Everybody out there is doing these long <laughs> videos. <laughs> we're going to do, like, bite-sized nuggets. Yeah, people, people can just watch it. on their break, you know. Yeah, um, we got five, like three to five minutes, maybe seven, at maybe the most. seven at the most. Yeah, and, <laughs> and of course, obviously, at, over time, that you know, that link has increased as we started to do the monster shows, which oh, early yeah. on were a big thing because it was like nobody else out there was really talking about monsters. It, it was more like DM tip style, like yeah. you know, my help my players do an X Y Z, and I want them to stop kind of yeah. things. And, and my, my, my players keep making stinky cheese. Right, right. Yeah. I drew a lot of uh, inspiration from the D&D blogs that I've read for decades or more now. And a lot of them are inspirational. They're, they don't talk about rules that much. They don't they don't go into the nitty gritty of mechanics and things mm -hmm. like that. They're just like, hey, I came up with this really cool idea. Here are the ways in which you can use it. Yeah. Or let's think about player agency for a while and, and what that really means and how you go into it. And so I drew a lot of inspiration myself from those sources and was like, all right, how do we put this in a format that people want to pay attention to? And then it just kind of languished early on. We were a small YouTube channel for a year or more, right? Like, yeah. I forget when it was that we, we got the big, big bump. You know? Uh, we hit 10K. Was yeah, it, it was 10K? We hit 10K and, and that took us a year? Which was a September, September 2016. So it was a year and a half. A year and a half for us to get it, to 10K. Because it was March 2015 where we started. Right. September 2016 we hit 10K. Yeah. And then after that was it was explosive. And it yeah. really was one of those things where we hit 10K and was just like, wow, this is really cool. We had an opportunity to shoot at the YouTube studios. Uh, I guess there was like a pop-up studio or something like yeah. that. Yeah, we just go up there and do this thing. And it was the first time we were around like... Right, like, it was like a full crew. There, there was, was like a full crew. There was there. there were like three guys miking us up. And there were yeah. two people on lights. It was Hollywood shit. It was Hollywood shit. You know, before going in, I was like intimidated as shit. And we just rocked through our, our Lycanthrope show. And we get done and they're like... That's great. Y'all, wow, y'all were great. Like, you know, like, I don't know what they were expecting. I don't know what they were expecting. But when, when a professional crew goes, y'all were really professional. Thank yeah. Y'all made that really easy. I'm yeah. like, oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that's, that's great. So so that was the, the at the tail end of 2016. Yeah. And then most of 2017 was this skyrocket. Just of watching, of the watching numbers, numbers grow. grow. And, and every time we'd hit a benchmark, just being like dumbfounded. And, and humbled, but it wasn't until we started to see these like big explosive growth mm -hmm. that it was like something's up here. Part of the mystery of WebDM to me is trying to figure out why people watch. I'm serious. Yeah. I, I still am. And and what is it about the chemistry between Pruitt and I? Because Pruitt and I have monetized our friendship. In essence, in that's essence. because we aren't <laughs> characters. This is right. us. Yeah. I mean, the most character I get into is the beginning of the intro. Right. Hey there, I'm hey there. there. Yeah, and yeah. then as soon as the show starts, you know, it's whatever. And yeah, and this is who we are. This like, we are. And, and so <laughs> I don't it, know. It was authenticity and an awareness that the people that we were talking to were, you know, they were coming to us for advice because something wasn't working for their game or they wanted to be inspired or... Mm -hmm. Uh, every time I get a message from someone who's like, you guys got me back into gaming, or I was almost out and you kept me in, or... All the time. I just started and you guys have given me the confidence I need to run a game. Like, and those messages are, are on an almost daily basis, and it's one of those things that 
myself, I don't see myself as influential or as uh, particularly noteworthy. But I can't ignore the fact that some people out there, yeah. I am saying something that's connecting with them. Right, and, th and that's the great thing I think we're learning about uh, perception and reality, which is you, you yourself do not get to determine that. You don't, yeah. You Someone present else. what you have and what you know, and yeah. if people think it is noteworthy, then they will tell you. Yeah. And Thank you. Y'all have you told us. Yeah, yes, <laughs> we hear you. And I, we are, we're not for everybody. And there yeah. are people who are not going to uh, uh, find the advice we give useful. I, or, and they're dicks, but that's fine. They're dicks. <laughs> I'm kidding. And, and there I'm have kidding. been times... <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, there have been times when a, a particularly vicious thread on, on Reddit has been instructive and we've come back to videos and, mm. and taken that advice, yeah. no matter how perhaps insensitively put, uh, to heart. We never want to get to a point where we're no longer listening to you guys mm -hmm. and no longer trying to take what you would like to hear and see into account. And of course, last year we launched a Patreon, which was one of those things where like humble expectations and now we look at it and it's like, holy shit, we're we're within uh, stepping stones of, of being able to do this full time through tools like YouTube and Twitch and Patreon yeah. that connect us with people that we are clearly resonating with. Mm -hmm. And it's a surprise to me. It continues to be a humbling and thrilling surprise. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> every day I wake up and, and, and check the numbers, uh, whether it's on, like you said, YouTube or when I post a video on Reddit, which, you know, other creators are like, how did you do yeah, that? Oh, yeah, Reddit? That, the Reddit part Reddit, is one Reddit, of I mean, like, Reddit, like, <laughs> Travis introduced me to Reddit, uh -huh. right? He's like, dude, you're going to love Reddit. Reddit's not for everybody. It's not for right? me. And it's, it's not. not. It's not. I use it mostly just for memes and, and some information. But I was like, you know, there's a strong community on Reddit. I think we can, we can get in there. And it took beating my head against the wall of right. Reddit for a long time. All I did was stay positive. I never engaged with negativity. What I found out very quickly is our fans will come to our defense, and I didn't actually have to do anything. Oh yeah, you guys are rabid. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Don't get your shot, but watch out for the lockjaw. Um, you know, uh, uh, we appreciate yeah, it. We, we certainly appreciate do, that. And, and we see it. But uh, now, but, yeah. you know, we post a video on Reddit, and you know, it's got a hundred, a couple of hundred likes, and it's we'll starting, stay on the front it's page starting for a, a conversation. Yeah. Of you know, and so it's like, hey, thank you if you're seeing it there. I love I love everybody on Reddit. Being engaged in part of this community has just given me so much life. It sounds cliche, but it's like you know, we give it to you and y'all give it right back, so we can give you more. And yeah. and uh, well, it really is. It, there's a flow to this, yeah. and and just being energized by it. And it energized, and I the community part is really really important to me. I love this hobby. Yes. I, it is the only thing in my life that has stuck with me mm -hmm. once I found it. Everything else I've done, I've either I've either enjoyed it until I'm done or given up out of frustration, but role playing is one of those things that has stuck with me. And I genuinely want as many people playing as many different ways as they find enjoyable here. And I, I it bothers me to go in online places and, and to see vitriol and, and hate and yeah. anger around something that I see as only a net positive, that this game has brought me so much joy and excitement mm -hmm. and, and thrills and friendships and, and all kinds of beautiful and amazing things. And I don't see why everyone can't have a seat at the table and play the kind of game that they want. And so that's the message that I yeah. very early on and quickly was like, this is what we've got to say. This is what we have to do. And, and being a part yeah. of a community of other both content creators and role players, whether we're making jokes and, and being idiots over on Twitter, which is where we talk to some of you guys, whether we're in our podcast where we're way looser <laughs> and rambly and just can let our minds wander mm -hmm. around a topic for a while, that being a part of that community and, and spreading a message of this game is wonderful and amazing and there's so many different ways to play it and you shouldn't limit yourself to one. You should try as much as possible and you should invite as many people in. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how important that being a part of that community was going to be to me. Yeah, it's been a constant refrain on this show. In order to achieve that, it's it really is just one simple rule, which is don't be a dick. Right. <laughs> right. It, it's amazing it, how it easy that is. It's like that's all you have to do, and oh my God, people want to hang out and want to 
enjoy this hobby together Wanna and game together and create these stories together and you know have these moments together because this hobby is seen by as played by only anti-social people but at its heart it is an intensely social situation you're yeah. you're with a group of people problem solving yeah you know you're doing things that you need out in the real world to ascribe any kind of negative connotation by the people that are involved in this is just yeah. like it's mind-blowing it's mind-blowing and I, I think you know we came along at a time when the hobby itself was undergoing a bit of a transformation it's been amazing to have this this sort of trio of events of us us forming webdm yeah fifth edition coming out and live streaming starting to become a bigger part of the hobby it's part of the engine that has helped webdm become the success that it has yeah because the hobby itself is changing there's new people entering the hobby they're not interested in flame wars they're not interested in the minutia of rules they seem to be interested in the narrative potential of role playing yes and of creating games and stories and 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 all of those wonderful things through the what i what i like to call the strange alchemy of the game yeah the game as it is played we've been fortunate enough that we had an amazing producer who's always behind the camera and always helping us out and always there handling the technical aspects of it so that Pruitt and I can focus just on content. And the trio of the three of us, we were able to like ride this wave of yeah. increasing popularity of Dungeons and Dragons, of shedding that anti-social, this is just for basement dwelling nerds yeah. kind of, there's nothing wrong with being a basement dwelling nerd. I aspire in really many ways to, can, it, to have a basement to dwell in. Yeah, it's quite cool. You can save on <laughs> heating bills. Right. Um, <laughs> I've always wanted to live in a basement. Yeah. Anyway. Down by the river. <laughs> Well, that's why I play Dungeons and Dragons. And D&D is like experiencing explosive growth and they, what is the 2017 like the most profitable year for Dungeons and Dragons and all that corporate BS is great. That's fine. It's great that the hobby is in such a position that you can say, yeah, I earn a living by playing and talking about Dungeons and Dragons. That That's an amazing thing. And yeah. that's something that I didn't realize even when we started this, that it would take up so much of my life and yeah. that it would become such a big part of my life. Yeah. For the first year or so, it was just like, ah, oh, it's a thing we do once every few months. And oh yeah, I guess I should go and watch my YouTube channel, I guess. Yeah. And, and see what they're saying in the you comments. Know, seeing what they're saying in the comments. The comments have always been a place I like to be in. And yeah. I don't get to spend as much time in the comments as I used to. Yes. Um, but someone sees them. One of us or Emma, our, our uh, director of communications who helps us out with social media and strategizing and things like that someone sees them and someone makes note of them you know this thing that we've made has already exceeded my wildest expectations for it yeah well it's amazing to me when I look at where it started and when I, the other day I was looking back at our early videos and they're all like seven minutes we cover We're four, so young four We're classes so fresh faced and young in seven minutes yes. we cover four <laughs> classes in seven minutes right? classes that we hadn't really played hadn't that really much played of, yet right like that's, that's the dirty Fine. secret of those early videos. And I think you could tell. I don't think anybody, <laughs> we're not we telling tales out of school. We revisited but them for a reason. We revisited them for a reason. We had more experience. <laughs> but when you look at where we started and where we are now with all of our platforms that, that we have reached out to, with Twitch and Patreon, you can, if you want, get WebDM five days a week. You can get WebDM five days a week. <laughs> On Patreon, we have our Monday Q&A. When we're filming here, we have questions from our Patreon members. We do like a little five, six minute video answering yep. specific questions every Monday. Every Monday. My game is on Tuesday on Twitch, 6 p.m. Check it out. We have the Wednesday show that has been the anchor, the mainstay. And we'll continue our, our, to be. Our port in any storm. Yes. Thursday, Jim's game, 6 p.m. on Twitch, yep. Central. Friday, we have a podcast on Patreon that generally runs about an hour and a half. Hour and a half to two hours. Sometimes we interview people that we're interested in and to, to talk to. Sometimes we bring in like a subject expert, like someone who's really knowledgeable about Spelljammer or Dark, Dark Sun, Sun, some of the settings that we're interested in. A lot of times it's a potential show topic that we want to talk through some of the elements of it's more stuff it's know? more stuff and we generally recap our games we're playing it's just to me it's 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 almost insane to see to ever think that this could happen yeah and that so, we would be in a position where we are right now yeah. but i i just know that from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you thank you much. for tuning in for engaging with us and showing that this is more than just a bunch of nerds wasting time. 
right? Like right. We're like role, playing this game is oh, it's just a waste of time. You know, like no, no, this is this is creativity. This is inspiration. This yeah. is you know. So thank you. Thank you. Love you. Yes, it has changed our lives. And it's been a an amazing time, and we really couldn't have done it without everyone who's watching now and everyone who's been watching from the beginning. I haven't forgotten our guy, uh, Blab Blabanoa Blah. Remember him or, from or the early commenter? I haven't seen him in the comments in a long mm -hmm. time. Even even is it him? It could be yeah. someone else entirely. But we remember you guys, yeah. and you we're just regular people. And when you have other regular people telling you the things that they tell us, it makes an impression. Provides a creative. Uh, purposeful outlet um, that is, for me personally, invaluable beyond words. And I cannot thank you guys enough for the uh, support and the spreading the word and the comments and the likes and the shares and the subscribes and the follows and all of that business, all of the social media junk that you got to put up with. Yeah. We notice and we appreciate it and we, we hope to remain worthy of your uh, support. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, about as sincere as I get. Yeah. So from, uh, from right nerd. Left nerd. And left nerd. Thanks again, yep. and we'll see you next week. As a way of celebrating, we partnered with Tabletop Loot to bring you a special gift. For the next week, use the coupon code WEBDM100K to receive a special 25% off discount at the Tabletop Loot online store. Offer expires May 7th, 2018. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday. <laughs> Let's get your questions in and your answers out. <laughs> All right, let's go live to Superfan Daniel on the field uh, with a question from our Legion of Patreon fans. Go ahead, Daniel. What are character concepts you've always wanted to play but have never been able to make work? <laughs>